And now we'll hear from John Turmel. Who doesn't think that paying kids with bus tickets to shovel your snow isn't the smartest idea you've ever heard of <laughs> in history? Every city could do it, every town could do it. Paying kids with bus tickets to clean the parks, no more dog doo-doo on your shoes. And people could, the real workers could be filling up potholes. So, four years ago I started a new site, smartestmanonearth.ca, smartestman.ca for short. And that's my idea, paying kids with bus tickets. Now, eight years ago, we were at a school, right Chris? And I asked the kids, how many of you kids would work for six two-hour bus tickets an hour? Did you see any kids say no? They loved it. Matter of fact, walking out, he said, you won them. Well, guess what? No media allowed. Therefore, nobody found out that all the kids were ready to shovel your snow. Well, I got videos where I interviewed 100 kids said, would you shovel in snow and clean the parks for bus tickets? And 100 kids said, yeah, only one said no. Probably rich kid or dumb, one or the other. But it's at YouTube. YouTube for it, bus bus. Matter of fact, Chris's son, Connor, last video, said, yeah, I'd work for bus bus. But nobody knew about it, so they didn't vote for it, so you're still shoveling your own snow. Now, someday the kids are going to ask, why didn't you vote to give us jobs paid with bus bus? And you're going to have, A, I didn't know about it. We'll put you under an uninformed. B, oh, I got a reason, but I can't really tell you what it is. So, the point is, I got you trapped. I've offered you the smartest idea in history two times already. And some of you people already said no twice. And this is your third chance to reject the smartest idea in history. So the next time you're up, you know, you got an excuse. First town in the country with fluoride. Next time you're shoveling your snow, imagine Johnny Engineer laughing. Last. Thank you very much, John. And finally, so the question, what measures would you undertake to improve safety for drivers and pedestrians in the future? John? I would match the advanced lights with the extended lights. How many people have sat at St. Paul turning right, I mean at Brant Avenue turning right on St. Paul under the overpass? Can't turn on a red light while the other guys are going. Don't you feel stupid? I do. There's absolutely no reason we shouldn't be able to be turning right on an extended while they're turning left on an advanced, right? There are a dozen spots in Brantford where you don't have matched lights. North Park Road in Fairview, right here, you don't have matched lights. Church Street, you know, West Street at uh, Charing Cross, they're all over the place. How can you sit there and have red lights for you while the other stream going in the other direction has an advanced or an extended? Somebody at the planning department wasn't doing their job very brightly. So, yes, there's no reason we don't need more roads, we don't need more cops ticketing people who are cut and turns quickly to try and make it on those few seconds since the time was taken away. We just got to match the lights. And then we have maximum efficiency. So, match the lights so that I can be going while the other guys are going and there's no danger and we're going to have a lot better traffic stream and maybe the problems will disappear. Thank you very much, John. 36 years ago, I was arrested passing up flyers at the IMF World Bank Conference in Toronto saying, why don't we pay government employees with tax credits? Bonds, provincial bonds, federal bonds, municipal bonds, anything they can use to pay their taxes with. Three years later, six provinces in Argentina started paying their employees with bonds because they were broke and it worked. And in a few years, they paid off all their foreign debt by using local currency. So, here's how it works. If we were to pay hospital employees 10% of their salaries in tax credits, that frees up 10% of the cash to pay for the operating room. Or 20%. Same with police. We could have more police by getting them to accept 10 or 20% in local city bonds they can spend instead of cash. That frees up cash to hire more police. Same thing with firemen. All government employees.
employees could do the Argentine solution, which is take government bonds or tax credits in your pay, and that frees up cash to hire more guys. Well, if it worked for the Argentinians, can't we be that smart too? Thank you very much. If only we had more money. <laughs> right? Back to not enough fund. Shall we tax you more? Well, if we had paid tax credits into circulation in exchange for work, like they did in Argentina, more taxes wouldn't hurt, would it? So, if there's more money that goes into circulation, more taxes doesn't hurt. So they're asking you, are you willing to accept the hurt of more taxes? Because we're not going to put any local currency in circulation. Can we take more of your federal stuff? And guess what? You ain't got much more. So it is going to hurt. you got to think outside of the box. And I'm looking at the crowd here, and there may be only be under 10 people under 30 years old. Everybody else got so much gray hair thinking outside of the box. Forget it. You ain't done that in 20 years. And you're not going to start it now. Are you? But young kids, perhaps. Come on, I'm trying to urge you. Look at it. I'm an advocate for legal marijuana because marijuana regrows brain cells. That's why I'm so sharp and you're so dull. All right? So, it's not the only reason. And I'm trying to point out that you've got to think outside the box. You can't do what you always did all the time in the past and expect something different. That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So, how do we get more money? Well, we can free up some of the budget by covering some of the expenses with our own local poker chips. Don't have my first poem in politics. Why represent our collateral with their chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? So, yeah, back to the same solution. If we have alternate currency to pay part of the workers' salaries, that's going to free up more cash to get things you want done. Thank you very much, John. Outside the box. And now we'll turn... In 1984, I financed the first time bank software called Let's, which allows single parents to log on what nights they can double duty babysit each other's kids and pay each other with one hour bills. Well, the biggest successful Let's is in Japan, called Furiyu Kipu, and it helps old people. If you put in time in your time bank, taking care of an oldster, reading to him, taking him to the store, taking him to the doctor, cleaning his place, Later on, you can call on those hours to take care of you. Over half the people in Japan belong to their health care time bank. So, rather than be a volunteer and get nothing, get credit for your time, like the smart people in Japan do. Surely we can be smart too. Then I would deter growth. If you understand exponentials, 1%, the law of 72, you're... Money will double in 12 in 72 years. And at 2%, four times Bradford could be bigger. If it grew at 3%, eight times it would be bigger. If it grew at 5%, 32 times the size it is now. And if it grew at 10% a year, that's a thousand times bigger than it is now. That's how big a city will grow in one lifetime, 72 years. So when they talk about one, two, three percent. Doesn't sound like much, but it's double, quadruple, octuple the original size, and it gets worse. So, we don't need more growth. We actually have to deter growth to keep it as sustainable as possible. So, I would do my best, my best, to try and keep growth down because it's just too dangerous when you're dealing with exponential functions that double and double in time. Thank you very much, John. Well, most of these people are getting high because they got no jobs. They got too much time. If they could work for bus tickets or tax credits, maybe they wouldn't have time to do chemical drugs. So the solution is jobs and free pot. Pot will get them off the chemicals. By next year, you will experience the benefits of herbal medication, herbal highs, herbal enhancement. You people think pot is like alcohol. Makes you drunk and stupid and barf on your friends. It doesn't. It enhances 
is your performance. I'm an accordionist. You should see me when I smoke a joint first. <laughs> so, so, I'm going to try to say that by next year, you'll have more evidence about how herbal medication will be able to get a lot of people off your chemical addictions. And if you can match it up with a useful job, then there's almost no reason not to need the chemicals. But if they do, yeah, I don't want the needles in the streets. Give them a sight. Thank you very much. Well, in furthering my idea that I don't like development, I don't want development, I would use that land for corn and tomatoes and pot, farms, okay? That's all I can think of. By the way, I stand up because I don't want to whack Wayne or Dave in the head. And I've done that before. So, <laughs> so anyway, no, I mean, honestly, I don't have any opinion on what should be done with that land. But I like the idea of cheaper food and cheaper pot. Thank you very much. And finally, well, I think I've already explained that, right? I would pay the homeless with bus tickets, and I would let their landlords pay their taxes with bus tickets, too. So the landlords have a reason to let these guys move in. So you can't just keep forking up cash from your pocket to keep these people housed when they're ready to work. Just like all those kids are ready to work. They want to work. They want to be useful. There's a lack of money for paychecks to let them be useful. But by thinking outside the box, creating a community currency, do a Google search, community currency. It's in 10,000s of cities by now since I started it in 84, 36 years and 34 years ago. So. If they can do it all over the world, use community currencies, why can't we do it here? But if we do it big, with a municipality backing it up, so that these tokens are good both for buses and taxes, everybody will take it just at Canadian money. Thank you very much. It's it sounds like a similar, a similar question from before, where I mentioned the Japan Time Bank, Furia Kipu where if you help your neighbor for an hour, they'll help you back later when you need help. I mean, isn't that a complete solution? Why would 50% of all Japanese people belong to this? Why would they be helping their elderly? Well, if you help my mama, well then someone's gonna help, I'll help your mama, is what it boils down to. It's almost the same thing as babysitting swapping, but it's helping my mama swap. So, it's the same idea, it's the same software, I've been using the same idea to answer every single question, except the land use for the pot and for the crop corn. But I mean, same answer again. The Furio Kipu Time Bank would allow the youth to take care of the old people and then be taken care of later. Thank you. Well, sadly, you're the couple of hundred people who heard about bus tickets paying kids with bus tickets to shovel your snow. And therefore, there's a really good chance that no one else out there is going to hear about it. I don't expect you to tell them. And therefore, you're going to end up shoveling your snow for the next few years. And guess what? No sunspots. Worst sunspots in a long time. We're going to have a mini ice age. So when you find yourself out there shoveling out those snow dunes when the plow goes by, remember me. But... <laughs> The good news is, by the in end of October, you'll be able to start experiencing neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells, which is good for Alzheimer's and dementia when you take cannabis pot. So, who knows, by the time the next election comes around, you might vote to stop shoveling your own snow. Thank you. Michael? No, wait, sorry.